is pretty much my first time presenting in the camera. So I'm excited as well as nervous for this. So just wish me good luck. Uh, so today we are going to talk about the Amazon's uh, QAE, in QAE interview for a level five position. So whoever has worked with Amazon, they might know level five is pretty much like a, you know, a senior level and people who do not know, they understand it starts from L1 to L5. So pretty much a QA interview level five in the sense it's uh, pretty much a senior level, which involves mentoring as well as uh, contributing to the team. So uh, let us begin with this. So before we start, I would like to give a couple of disclaimers. So uh, whenever, an, uh, whenever someone attends an interview with Amazon, they are asked to sign an NDA, which basically means they won't be sharing the direct questions on any public platform or to anyone so that, you know, like they get an idea of it. But in this video, uh, I won't be sharing any uh, direct contents to you. Instead, I will be sharing the pattern, the way, the, the, uh, the qualities which Amazon expects, expects uh, for you to be an expert in their role. So that's pretty much on the disclaimer part. And uh, to clear one more thing, uh, this experience is shared by one of my friends who wasn't comfortable sharing it on the screen. So I got all the information possible from him as required. Uh, and I have prepared a simple presentation. I hope you would like it. So uh, it's pretty much covers almost everything. So uh, let me get started with my first slide, uh, the pre-interview process. So uh, what happens uh, before the interview? So once you apply or get referred in the Amazon's QA, you get some uh, pre-interview process, which basically means uh, you get an email from the recruiter saying your resume has been shortlisted. And before going, uh, taking it further, they would want certain assessments to be completed. The first one is online assessment fitment test, which basically means uh, I will like, I will uh, I will get back to it. Like there are two tests actually: online assessment, fitment test, and behavioral assessment. The first one, uh, the fitment test, is basically they would have certain scenarios. Say for example, uh, it would be like a uh, just like a choose the best answer kind of thing. We just need to find the best solution. You will be provided with a question saying a scenario like where a QA manager has given you up this particular task, and as a QA lead or as a senior QA engineer what is the best action among given you should be taking. So these types of questions will be asked. Uh, almost everything would be uh, very simple to clear if you have basic idea on uh, this craftsmanship. Similarly, the behavioral questions. So it is pretty much like, uh, you know, like they will ask you questions like, uh, how, how do you start a day? What, uh, how do you start a day when the first, the work you, which you do is a failure? So uh, will that affect you on the entire day? How good are you in motivating other people? So do you need someone to motivate you? Or uh, uh, do you want someone to follow up on your work? Or, like, how is your character? So it's pretty much these things are pretty much simple, and I hope like almost everyone gets clear on this. So these are pretty much like a, a pre-interview process. So once this done, a couple of days later, the HR get back to you and they share the exact JD and they talk about the team for which they are hiring, and then they schedule a date which is comfortable to you, and then they also share some materials where. Uh, a complete JD of what Amazon uh, QA it does. So let us go to the first round, like what happens in the first round. So first round is a purely a technical round. This was actually conducted by a senior QA engineer of Amazon. Uh, as usual, uh, you know, the first, the first thing is the basic introduction. The candidate gives the basic introduction. I mean, you don't require to give, you know, the entire career. Uh, say, for example, you have six to eight years of experience. You doesn't uh, require to give all the details. In the, very in the technical round, you can talk about uh, the technical things which you have done so that uh, you can talk about your entire career thing to the, uh, to the HR or the hiring manager, uh, hiring manager round. So the first would be the basic introduction and then he would go on to read your resume and ask questions from your resume or from the introduction you are given. And then uh, since it's the initial level, they ask some logical puzzles like okay, cutting problems or the train problems. So it basically depends on the interviewer. We cannot judge pretty much here like what is what's gonna be asked. And the most important thing uh, in the you know like uh, first round is uh, the the coding round. So uh, what I would suggest is uh, Amazon is you know like uh, very much into uh, writing a procedure of the course. So it's not just that like when they pro when they gave you, when they give you a question, you are not only expected to write the code but also to write a clear code. There is a big I mean there's a huge difference between a code and a clear code. You both might be returning the output, but there's a difference between a clear code, a code which anyone can read and you know enhance or delete it, whatever it is. 
so that kind of code is expectation so the tip which i would like to give it here is most of the uh, i have before making this video i did search for few uh, videos in the youtube and the glassdoor reviews and i see most of the questions uh, asked in the qa interviews are uh, from the basics of strings so if you can just log into your lead code account and learn the basic strings uh, questions and solve them i think probably you should be good to go for the first round so this happens around 1 hour and i think this should be good enough if you are uh, good with the basic logic puzzles and uh, writing clear codes and then uh, let us probably move to the second round again we have a, a technical uh, second round over here this was conducted by a uh, senior sz the same thing happens again the basic information and here the next thing is it's not uh, you know like basic into uh, testing part but rather it comes into automation part so the test uh, the the interviewer start asking you what is the kind of uh, uh, programming knowledge you have or what is the kind of framework you have worked on whether it's bdd tdd what kind of framework you work and if you have built something from the scratch up or if you have enhanced something you need to take up a pencil and chart if or if it's a virtual interview you need to draw something and then explain the overall framework which you have worked on how the exact so where is the json connectivity where is the database connectivity and where is the ui element saved up etc etc so this thing i mean if you are an automation automation engineer you need to know this basic details like how your framework works that's something basic and which is expected to be heard from you and then uh, they ask some tricky programming functions for example how how the word you know like a final and finally static or final how it differs so this kind of some tricky question they ask and after that they also ask you to you know like write uh, give a scenario say for example uh, any particular thing they could ask for a pen or a, or for a book they ask you to write edge in negative test cases so we do have a test craftsmanship interview which is in the third round where we have to write test cases but here uh, you know this is mostly concentrated into the uh, tricky uh, part this uh, this interview is little bit tricky where you concentrate more on the automation part and uh, the uh, testing comes uh, you know slightly uh, 20 80 percentage so they ask you to write edge in edge in the you no know, negative test cases which would hamper the overall testing coverage uh let us move to the next round of interview which is again a technical interview so this was again conducted by a senior qa engineer who is who was an l6 so it starts with the same basic information and here they gave us a you know like a clear writing test cases say for example an e-commerce website or a mobile uh, application it could be anything like it depends on the interview so they asked us to write the use cases probably you could write 100 of these cases but you can ask the interviewer like how much percentage they want whether they want the higher level test cases high level scenarios it's up to you to decide it's how you communicate with the interviewer probably you can take that uh, and then write test cases to make sure uh, you satisfy them apart from that uh, the next thing was uh, metrics so since this qa role is a, a senior role as i said earlier so uh, you will be reporting to the multiple stakeholders and those stuff right so there there are multiple metrics and used in testing for decision making whether for a deployment whether for a rollback there are decision involved so so you need to understand the metrics used in your team yet in the testing overall in general probably you can google up from uh, you know metrics used in testing you would see hundreds of metrics probably not every everything will be used by you but there are certain things which will be say for example pass percentage fail percentage these are some basic or i think decisions uh, sorry metrics which everyone would be using so uh, those are some things uh, which could be uh, you know like uh, which you can be telling to the interviewer and then they would uh, ask some uh, things like a real life problem solving scenarios so, so basically here it means like uh, say for example uh, they would ask you what was the most challenging time uh, and then how did you handle it what was the bit personal or person, uh, professional you might have to think about a scenario where there was a uh, there was a problem and how did you solve it so guys and one more thing uh, there are multiple approaches of uh, solving a problem and uh, there are multiple ways presenting a problem so there is one way uh, which amazon expects you to answer i have mentioned that particular thing in the last page of the slide uh, so please wait until then like how do you respond to this questions uh, so till then keep watching it uh, next uh, we have the final round which is a managerial round post which the hr round happens so this uh, but technically this is the last round uh, which is a managerial round so here you can provide your detailed overall introduction if you have around 10 years of experience or 5 years of experience talk about from your day one to you know like till the current uh, day to like what are your achievements and those stuff also talk about the recent achievement you made 
which might uh, impress your interviewer and the challenges which you faced and how you solved it. And as usual, they come up with questions like why QAE or why Amazon? And they also ask you to talk about failures, like how do you handle failures? If you are on a lead, leader position, what do you do as if what you do if you fail if you maybe you might fail as an individual you might fail as a team how do you react to it like do you have any experience on that so how do you handle the situation so those kind of you know like tricky questions would be asked in the managerial round and since i said like uh, uh, this is a senior level how would you handle this was with negative impact on team so probably when i say senior level you would have multiple people reporting to your team so there will there would be one or two guys who would be, you know, like not performing 100% like how do you handle this situation? So these are some, uh, you know, like uh, uh, basic questions which they would ask and they would see how do you respond to it. So it's basically a brainstorming kind of a session where they try to understand how uh, mentally stable you are for this particular position and how challenging it would be for you uh, mentally as well. So this is pretty much like a managerial interview. And here are the tips which I could relate. Uh, so uh, whatever that uh, experience you share with them, so Amazon always has this 14 principle which they uh, believe. So I've given the link over here. I will add this in the description as well and I will show you by end of this uh, video as well. And when I said, you know, like you are explaining things to your interviewer, be it any round, first day, be it technical or manager round, when you are talking about your situation and explaining them, make sure you always follow a star approach. A star approach is something where, uh, you know, the yes stand for situation, T for task, A for action, and R for result. So you need to explain them the situation first, and then the task you wanted to achieve, the action you provided, and the result you achieved. So this is something is a proper uh, format or, or approach, I would say, to talk about uh, your experiences in Amazon interview, or in general, I would say any interviews. So uh, meanwhile, I will just show you a link where the, uh, this is the link where Amazon leadership principle is there. So whenever, say for example, you might have uh, solved a solution which was, which was reported by a customer and you might have done it in a shorter period of time, which basically means you are customer obsessed. So you can talk about this terminology, customer obsession, ownership, anyone and simplify. So these are something uh, which the Amazon, uh, Amazon, Amazon in, expect in the upcoming Amazon. Similarly, if you have, you know, like there could be scenarios where you had a discussion with a manager and you would have disagreed with your manager and made a, another changes in your team, which in turn resulted in, a, in, your, in your favor and your team performed very well. So there are said, if that's a scenario, you can say, you know, like a, have backbone, disagree and commit. So you can use this kind of, uh, you know, terminologies, the principles, you can relate it. So before going to the interview, make sure you remember all these uh, 14 principles of Amazon and relate it with your experience. Experience is something which we gain, you know, throughout the day, throughout the year. So you might be, you might have done all, all of these, but the relating thing is something uh, which you need to take care. So these are all, you know, like some of the tips which I find uh, will be useful to you guys. So uh, I thought of making this video and uh, I would also like to thank my friend who attended the interview and who shared me these details. And I hope uh, this made sense. At least if, if not 100%, if not 80%, at least uh, 30%, I would say. If it might have helped you 30% if you are going for an Amazon interview. So if you have liked it, just let me know in the comment section. Share it with your friends who are attending interviews or in general. So uh, let's see. So if you are attending the interviews, all the best for you. Uh, do well. Keep practicing. And one more thing I wanted to say, you guys, uh, recently I have been uh, talking with uh, multiple automation engineers who are looking for a change. Not just the automation testers, but gender, in general testers. Everyone has one complaint that companies are looking for a uh, skill set which are mostly into coding. They don't ask about the testing at all. So that's not uh, true in all the companies. There are companies uh, which uh, hire you based on the test, test craft matches. So keep trying. And when it comes to automation, uh, People learn via YouTube, people learn via Udemy. There is no harm in that, learn, no problem. But until or unless, un until or unless you don't practice it, it doesn't make any sense, guys. Like until or unless you don't practice it, you, you need to have the IDE in your uh, personal system. And then say, for example, these are some things which uh, I did. When I learned, th th it, it doesn't make any sense to me to practice this stuff. But I did it to because I wanted, I really wanted to learn. So there are this much, this much of course, which I practiced before joining an automation organization. Since the, the, this is the first program, right? Hello world, everyone does it. So even I have done it. So uh, what I'm trying to 
what i'm trying to here to say is you need to uh, have a solid practice or hands on and hands on just watching the videos won't help sometimes yes sometimes you might be lucky and sometimes you might be uh, clearing the interviews but make sure you have hands on uh, beat any interview not just amazon you need to have some solid hands on experience uh, to clear the automation interviews uh, i really really hope that this has helped you guys and uh, if you have liked it then do please put a like and stay safe guys thank you so much for watching this and do subscribe to the channel and until the next time we meet take care bye bye assalam alaikum